Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Farming Simulator 19 in the Obertal Let's Play map. We are still here with our starting equipment we acquired in the previous episode, eagerly mowing and fermenting the grass, also delivering more water to produce lime and sell all the good stuff. I managed to pay back a good chunk of my loan and that's what we're gonna proceed doing in the first part of this episode. After that I think it's time for new equipment but before we do that let's go ahead jump into the truck and I actually want to bring it back to my trailer in order to set up some more deliveries. You can see my trailers are niftily parked and of course also auto drive took care of that. We are gonna program in the loading wagon in just a second. Right now I believe we should be able to sell some lime, yeah we can do about two loads or so. Actually we can even do three loads. Checking out the selling points at the moment, the central market is still the highest price, so that's where we're gonna go. Fortunately enough, I've already programmed that in. Now one important thing that changed between the episodes is I made an awful lot of waypoints, mostly for my farm and also the fertilizer plant. So everything is in categories now. If you check this out, we have a couple of folders. And if I open up the fertilizing plant, there are all the stations that we can possibly use and they are pretty descriptive so I always know what I'm doing. Same thing with my farm here, all of the loading and unloading points and some of the factories are already programmed in. So what we want to do is go to the fertilizing plant and load a bunch of lime and then we are gonna go ahead to one of our selling points, the central market and what we want to ship over is the lime. Right there, we want to do this three times and you can go, do your thing. There he comes. Thank you for the money! Anyways, I haven't programmed in the loading wagon just yet. This guy needs a proper parking spot. So let's open up our waypoints and the way I've done this, you can already see, I just went ahead and put in the waypoints myself. Since every time you drive backwards, it is just going nuts with the amount of waypoints you get and it's totally not necessary. So I want to drive my tractor all the way to this waypoint and then we're gonna do something like that, that, that and of course one last waypoint way back here. And I actually don't want them connected with the green line. No, that should not be the case. What we want is click this guy and then shift click in order to get the light blue line that indicates driving backwards. Now since we're coming in from a pretty steep angle, I might want to move these guys a little bit to the right just to make sure we can get this. And then the last thing we need to do is to name this waypoint here in the back. And then of course we also want to try it out. So there we go. This is going to be parking trailer number three. And it doesn't matter what trailer it is in the end. I can, you know, swap these, keep the names generic. And whenever there's a free spot, I can just assign it to one of my trailers. Okay, now all we have to do is select this new waypoint right here. We might actually want to move that into our parking spots already. Wonderful. Everything is sorted. We have it selected here. Right click on the parking icon there and now it is assigned to my trailer. Of course I have to make sure that the trailer is actually selected because technically I can also assign a parking spot for my mower which we might eventually do. But let's go ahead, left click the parking icon again and see how auto drive does it. We are moving all the way to the front and at this point we are trying to reverse. Now auto drive is much better at doing this with a tractor than with the truck. For some reason it's always wiggling back and forth with the truck. But you can see this is actually already looking pretty good with this trailer. Yeah, looks like I absolutely nailed it. Wonderful. Well, it's not perfectly straight, but it's good enough for me. And now I can also send this guy to parking because I've already programmed in the parking spot for my tractor. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna release the mower right here. So we have a close to the loading wagon. Let's check with our truck ah, just in the nick of time, just before we start selling absolutely wonderful. Our first lime cell for today and I can already feel ourselves getting out of debt pretty quickly today. Of course this is not a scenario I wish to live by. I would like to get into all of the productions and selling lime generally is not advisable. It's better to use it for your fields but somehow we had to develop a strategy that doesn't require us to buy one of these large fields that we cannot afford. Now technically I believe we should also have enough grass in here. Yeah, 108,000 liters so we can do approximately two loads with that as well if we run the time a little bit. And checking out the silage prices, um, let me see, uh, come on, come on, come on, right there. Also central market, man, give me some other selling points. 
Alright nice, with that introduction out of the way, let's go ahead and get out of debt and once that has happened, I'm gonna be right back. The prices have actually changed a little bit, so right now I'm on my way to the Trade Fruit Burg, right here with my truck. And I figured while we are waiting for these deliveries, we can take on a bunch of simple contracts that are not gonna take too too much of my time. And I'm mostly thinking about fertilizing at this point. 34,000 in order to fertilize field 9. Let's actually see where this is. Right here. Of course, it is a huge field, but fertilizing really doesn't take that long. Yeah, we can use the same route as we use for the trade through Berg. So I'm gonna hop in my tractor and I'm actually gonna grab the weight here in the front. And then we can just go ahead and reverse towards our fertilizer spreader. Another 35,000 in the joint. Ah, oh, I'm loving this. Okay, so what you want to do is drive to Trade Fruit Berg, and right there I'm actually gonna program in the point for the field itself. In the end, of course, I want waypoints for all of the fields, no exceptions. There is my truck again. Thank you for the money! Okay, it looks as though we can approach field number 9 right at this spot, so this is where I'm gonna do another loop-de-loop, -loop. and we're gonna go right here up to the edge, and this point right there. This is gonna be field 9 and it's gonna be the starting position. Then we wanna make sure we go back to our road and I actually want to give them the opportunity to go in both directions if they want to. So right here this is gonna join up with that route and then we also want the ability to turn around into the other direction like so. Maybe just to make this complete I also wanna be able to join up from the other side of the road to the field 9 waypoint. Okay, with that out of the way, let's set up course play. I'm not gonna show you the procedure every time. You know, all in all, I just want to keep you in the loop. And very often, I might just confront you with the results. Okay, this seems actually a pretty reasonable route to take. I'm gonna go ahead and exit that. I'm actually not gonna save it. I'm only gonna save it for the fields that I actually own. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and drive this course. I mean, of course, in order to complete this job, we're gonna use up a whole bunch of fertilizer, but it should technically be enough just with one load here. This is usually why I don't like the sowing jobs, because you have to get new seeds and everything. And that is just a pain in the butt. It also takes an hour or so in order to properly see the field. And I'd rather do that with just my own fields. There's my truck again, coming with a new load. We should earn some more money. And then I'm also gonna send them sell the silage. With all of these sales, we should be able to get rid of the loan completely and then we can finally take care of some new equipment. I'm probably gonna go ahead and improve my mowing process a little bit. We need a bigger attachment and possibly a windrower. Since I wanna go with really good equipment, we might just go with the best windrower. Hold on, what is this one doing? Wow, this guy's crazy. Yeah, I think this will actually suffice, but it's still 62,000. And then, of course, we still need the mowing attachment right here for the back of the tractor, which is another 42,000. So we need a little bit more than 100k after paying back the loan. But yeah, look at this. Even with this width, we will still take approximately 20 minutes in order to fertilize this field. There we go. We are at 146,000. There's actually one thing I would like to buy. Let's get into placeables. And I believe it would be in the miscellaneous section all the way back here. Yeah, those are some of the mods that I have installed and we do want to go with some of these displays. Let's maybe get started with the small displays here. And oh no, that's not where I want to be. We want to fly all the way over to my farm. Look at this field! This is insanity! Anyways, I would like to be at my farm here and the first thing I want to do is know what I have in my storages. So I want to hold C in order to align the thing to the grid and then with the arrow keys I can turn this around. There we go. Now all I want to do is place this right here. Come on, we can do this. You don't own this land. Oh no, don't tell me I have to purchase this. What is this going to cost me? 242,000. <laughs> and there go all my dreams. Well, I guess we're going to do that another time. Guys, it's gonna be absolutely crazy, but I do intend to own the entirety of this map. Everything. So help me out here, give me some motivation with a thumbs up. No, sorry, that was cheap. Uh, forget about it. You're still allowed to like the video, though. Alrighty, it is now the next day, both in-game as well as in real life. Let me just go ahead and show you what I've done in between those clips. I basically made a whole bunch of money. Yesterday it was 303,000 and today another 129k. 
We still have the potential to sell a couple of things, however, I believe we now have enough money, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, I repaid the entirety of the loan, so the 276k we currently have is all ours. Maybe as a little side note, I added precision engineering to the mod list in order to make the field work a little bit more intriguing. I will tell you more about it once we actually get to it, but we get a whole bunch of statistics. We now have different soil types we will have to analyze. We have a pH level, nitrogen level. This is going to make things a whole lot more interesting to actually keep balanced. Anyhow, it is now time to get back into the shop and I finally want to get myself that mower attachment. So this one here for 42,000. Can I get that one in the joint? Yes, thank you. We also needed the wind rower and I wanted... Oh, actually I added some more of the DLC. So this is what we can see here from the Alpine farming pack. Yeah, you know, I don't see a reason to go small. Let's get the 12.5 meter attachment here. That will be fun. 52,000. Yes, we can afford it. We can even afford more. Maybe we should purchase another tractor for this. Actually, maybe let's not be too greedy just yet. I'm gonna send this tractor to the shop in order to pick up these items. So, shop it is. Good luck on your journey. In the meantime, we're gonna check out some more in the store. What else could we do? I'm actually kind of tempted to take care of a bunch of animals. For instance, we could finally go for chickens. Why the heck not? Technically, we should be able to take care of them. Just feed them right here. We could go ahead and purchase some chickens right away. Hmm. Do we even own this land? And then right here, we would have some egg cartons that we can pick up. Yeah, you know what? It cannot hurt to get started with this. So let's just go ahead and purchase a bunch of chickens from the animal dealers. Uh, we want to go with at least one rooster, obviously. I'm then going to add about five white chickens, five black chickens and five brown chickens. It's only going to cost me a thousand. Sure, let's go for it. Ah, look at that. Here they are. Absolutely wonderful. What are you picking? I didn't even give you food yet. Yeah, chickens are pretty easy. Just a bunch of wheat or barley and then we need to keep them clean. Since we don't own a field right now with wheat or barley, I believe we should also be able to just purchase the food, which of course is not the best way of doing it. However, that would be our solution until we do own a field. The only question is, how are we going to pick this up and how are we going to bring it to the chickens? I probably want to go with the autoloader, which by the way, I sold again for some reason. So my trailer right here, that's probably what I want. We could go either with standard or what we probably going to need is the autoload in order to pick up the pallets automatically. And then we are going to dump them on the floor near the chickens, which means we're also going to need a pallet fork of some sorts. Yeah, I just have to test this out. I'm gonna repurchase that trailer and I'm also gonna go for a little bit of chicken feed. Let's go with just 10 of these pallets or so. Okay, that also means I'm gonna need to send my truck over to the shop. In the meantime, I suggest we get things going and bring the equipment back to base, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. Now, of course, I'm hoping that I will be able to pick up these pallets without any issues. But if we have to work, uh oh, looks like we have to work on that a little bit. <laughs> we are back with our tractor in order to load up the wind rower. And let's also bring that back to our farm. I should actually set up a dedicated spot to bring the vehicles to. Wash and repair is not necessarily convenient. Okay, I played around with this a little bit and decided the configuration needs to be auto-load. However, we still have to put in the work in order to ship these pallets. Now, I figured there is another mod that I have installed, this guy right here, that actually goes with the trailer. And if I'm not mistaken, this can also come with the auto-load functionality. Because, you know, picking up pallets and especially putting them down is extremely annoying and absolutely not intuitive. <laughs> Right here it is, ready to load up some stuff. We can actually take two pallets at a time, and the only thing we have to do really is activate the right buttons. But maybe first of all, let's bring these a little further apart, something like that. Now with the auto load functionality, I will not be able to pick them up myself. I'm just gonna push them forward a little bit. So what I have to do is hit the U button in order to get into the pickup mode, and then we should be seeing that being picked up. Um, at least I believe so. Come on, do me the favor. Oh no, don't tell me that's not gonna work. Whoop! <laughs> okay, we picked up the other pallet there. 
Wonderful. So the next step is going to be to hit the B button in order to get a projection on where you are going to drop these. Now I want to drop them on the very edge right here and I'm doing that with the Z button. There we go. Okay, let's do this again. You in order to load these guys up and I want two of you. Ah, wonderful. Okay, that's working much better now. B in order to set the plane and then I guess I want them approximately here. So it's a tiny bit overlapping. Uh, something like that. Uh, <laughs> it's not perfect. So let me just go ahead and load up the rest of these pallets and I'm gonna be right back. There we go. This should be the last one. And now all I have to do is fasten the belt. Within the truck I can hit the L button and everything is gonna be hooked to the trailer and in order to set up the cover. Of course some of it might actually poke out what you're gonna do. However, now comes the best thing. I can take this with me. At the back of the truck, as you can see here, I have two holes and I want to stick my fork into there. Something like that. Go all the way to the back, maybe angle it slightly. No, actually don't angle it, but what I want to do is lift myself up. Almost all the way, not too much. Now the problem is with auto load enabled with this guy, I cannot fasten the belts. Usually you would have an option to attach this. But according to the mod description, if you don't drive like a crazy maniac, it should still work. And that's exactly what we're gonna test now. Let's drive this back to wash and repair and see how we are doing. I mean, so far so good. It doesn't look unstable or anything. Um, <laughs> okay, I might have to figure out the proper angle with this. Wonderful, we actually managed to make it all the way back. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to play around with it some more. I'm just glad that I got these pallets back. I got it reattached and it already slipped out again, so maybe that is not the appropriate solution. I might just sell this guy again. But first it's time to unload the pallets. Give me pallets, thank you. I'm just gonna bring over the pallets right here and let's hope that actually works. What if we just unload this right here? Okay, looks like you actually have to lift the pallets a little bit. They cannot just hang out on the floor. <laughs> okay, and there is our first pallet gone and the food is completely filled up. This should last us for approximately 10 in-game days. Of course, as more chickens come along, this might decrease a little bit. All right then, my goal is basically going to be to stack these guys up right here and just keep them ready whenever I need some more food. Well, I managed to stack them up once. Let's see if we can do it one more time. Go on top of here. Wonderful, this actually works pretty well. And you go on top of this guy. <laughs> okay, I like it. I take it. Well then, now I basically need a parking spot for all of my new equipment, including the wind rower here. Then I'm gonna skip another day, see what happens with the chickens, and then we're gonna sell some more stuff, hopefully also mowing the field more efficiently. Guys, I just figured out something revolutionary. You can actually attach these mowers together, which means we can mow and wind row at the same time. I also noticed with the DLC that I installed, I have access to more mowers. So why not go ahead and actually take the bigger ones? I really don't see a reason why we shouldn't do that. I'm gonna sell my old mowers and get the large ones here. One thing I would like to know, at the moment I can sell this for 30k. I wonder if it is worth more if I bring it back to the shop. I think that was a thing at some point. Yes, look at that. It's even worth it. Actually, quite a bit. I'm also gonna repair it. That should help with the price as well. 37k, not bad for a refund. Okay, now let's actually try to put these guys together. I'm hoping this is gonna work like so. It actually doesn't look like it's gonna work. Though, right here it says actually they fit together. So, I just have to figure out how. <laughs> Okay, I couldn't really figure it out, but there's something else interesting. I can actually switch the work mode from wide spreading to swath dropping. So theoretically that means everything should be collected here in the center and we basically have the same effect without even using the wind rower. I think I might want to try that out because that would mean we can basically get rid of the wind mower in order to get some more money because I need to buy land. I need money desperately right now. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and drive this thing back home and try it out. There seems to be one more load of lime I can ship away. I think I'm gonna do that. Lime, lime, lime. 639. Not bad. Fruit tray perk even programmed in. There's no reason not to do it. Fertilization plant, pick me up some lime and sell it at the trade fruit burg. Good, after that we're basically ready to skip another day. Maybe we should check out the chickens. Yeah, they're 
Cleanliness went down a little bit, but their productivity is still pretty high. So far we have 30 liters of eggs, which isn't that much. Oh, by the way, that reminds me, I also bought myself a pickup in order to carry the eggs. That's why I don't have that much money anymore. So theoretically, we should be able to grab this package and then just load them into the pickup truck. Maybe we do this properly. Wonderful. And yeah, we even have some tension belts here, so nothing should go wrong. But I'm gonna wait until I have more eggs ready. Alright, I'm back ready to mow the field. If this configuration actually works, my next goal is going to be to maximize the harvest of this field. I believe in order to do that, we have to plow it, we have to lime it, and then we have to make sure it is in its highest ready-to-harvest growth stage. Now this little field has such an odd shape that course play just doesn't do a good job. So I decided to actually drive the path myself. We can just start a course recording and just drive over the field ourselves once. Just zooming back a little bit so I can see if that works with the swath mode. Uh, let me actually swap back to this attachment. Yes, yeah, swath dropping. So that should all be in the center there. Easy to pick up for me. Oh no, the mowers are not doing what I want them to. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go back to the shop and get my old mowers back. <laughs> I'll catch you in a second. I regret nothing. In the meantime, I'm also gonna tell my truck to do nine deliveries of water to my lime factory. Uh, actually, hold on. I might want to refuel first. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I purchased myself a little bit of diesel in order to fuel up, as well as the ad blue, of course. Okay, there we go. Now you can go ahead and do your thing. Thank you for making money. For some reason, it's much more obvious how to join these guys together. I'm not sure why I didn't manage to do it with the other ones, but there we go. Wonderful. Actually, thinking about it, this needs to be attached in the front so we can have the windrower in the back. Here we go. Looks like my tractor just has enough power to handle everything, but now we basically have to unfold everything. So you go down and you go down. Wonderful. At this point, I'm just gonna make sure we have everything turned on. Looks good. Course play and start course recording. That should now work out a little bit better. Well, the good news is once we have this done, we have to never worry about it anymore because I have the course saved and course play is gonna do it for the rest of the game for me. Wonderful. So far, this plan seems to be fruitful. Let's hope I'm not gonna mess up too much around the edges here. Actually, this is fairly doable. Doing the second row already, I'm fairly happy so far. If we're lucky, we can even take the same course for our loading wagon afterwards. Okay, last row. I didn't do it perfectly. I might actually redo this the next time it grows. But I think at the beginning of the next episode, we're first gonna take care that this field is yielding much more. At the moment, I feel like we don't get our full potential. So I want to make sure we can properly take care of the field and therefore get the best potential out of it as possible. There we go. My stuff is parked. I will be able to grab the loading wagon and actually pick this up. But let's have a quick look at the shop. What are we gonna require? First of all, we need to be able to spread some lime. I've already got myself a fertilizer spreader, but I would like to have one of these large ones. We're gonna go with the extension, of course, and the wheel setup. I guess doesn't really matter. However, the spreading disc, of course, is gonna matter. That is gonna set us back 76,000, but it's gonna be worth it and we need it for all the fields anyways. We also have to look into plows, maybe even subsoilers. That could actually be worth it. Oh no, this guy's also expensive. But we might not need an extremely large one for this field. Yeah, I guess right now I will not be able to afford anything better. I'm just gonna go with this cheap one. We can then sell it as soon as we can afford something better. And then we're also gonna need a cedar, that's for sure. Now, I also don't want to spend too much on this one. Well, it does get expensive rather quickly, I have to admit. Maybe we're just gonna go for this one here. 39k is affordable and for the grass field, not that bad. Last but not least, I need to be able to analyze the fields for precision farming, which I believe is located here, the scout. 17k, that is actually gonna bring us back to 1k, makes me sad. But this attachment here is going to be necessary in order to analyze the field and do this properly with all the soil condition you have to consider. Like we want to know what kinds of soil types we have here, also the pH and nitrogen levels. And then our goal is going to be to increase the yield to the maximum. So that is actually another thing. We will want to wait until we get this really dark golden color of the ready to harvest state in our grass field. And then hopefully at this point we're gonna get so many liters of grass we don't even know what to do with. 
But yeah, I think at this point we are gonna wrap it up for today's episode. I'm gonna finish this field, maybe do a couple more sales in the lime and silage department. But other than that, we're gonna meet us right back at the next episode when we improve this field. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.